French makeup artist and creative director for Guerlain Makeup, Violette Serra is also the founder and CEO of her own namesake brand, Violette FR. Stay tuned as we discuss her introduction to beauty, where she draws inspiration, and what's next for her very own brand. Hi everyone and welcome to Founder Beauty, a podcast dedicated to beauty entrepreneurs who built some of the biggest brands today and where we learn exactly how they did it. We'll cover some of the most intimate stories, their path to success and how they overcame the obstacles along the way. I'm Akash Mehta, CEO and co-founder of Fable and Main, a modern hair wellness brand inspired by ancient Indian beauty secrets. Building Fable in Maine has been an incredible journey so far, and I've decided to launch this podcast as a founder keen to learn and connect with fellow beauty brand founders around the world. I believe in collaboration over competition, and so I'm using this platform as a way to hopefully help and inspire each other in what can be quite a tough and lonely journey. So if you are an entrepreneur or simply just curious how to build a brand, this podcast is perfect for you. Thank you so much for tuning in and spreading the love always. And don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review so we can hear what you're loving so far. So without further ado, it's a delight to welcome our guest for today, Violette Serra. Uh, with over 300,000 followers on YouTube and over half a million followers on Instagram and 17 years of sharing a beauty expertise, Violette Serra is a definition of a beauty guru. Working at the likes of Sephora, Estee Lauder and Dior, Violette is now the founder and CEO of her own brand, Violette Afar, as well as a creative director of makeup for Guerlain. Her brand is a multi-category vegan beauty brand with makeup, skincare, fragrance and hair care, which almost comes to no surprise when we look at Violette's incredible career. She's well known for her professional makeup artistry, but also for exploration of beauty on YouTube and a creative inspiration from fine art and nature. And one thing I especially admire about Violette is her aim to leave behind a healthier beauty industry. She encourages everyone to have fun with makeup and champions that ever important message that our originality is what makes us beautiful. So Violette, thank you so much for being with me today. Hi, <laughs> thank you for having me. So, Violet, I ask every guest the same question. I'm going to ask you, who, in a nutshell, is Violet? Wow. <laughs> uh, let's say, okay, uh, that, um, yeah, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a creative director, and, and more importantly, I would say I'm a mother, mm. has a big place in my life. Um, I'm a believer. <laughs> I'm really focusing on using my business to share a philosophy that I think could help mental health globally. So I'm, I'm hoping not to have just a, just a successful business. Um, I'm hoping that my message will be heard and I can help people. I really care deeply about that. And, you know, um, it, it is really yeah, happening. Yeah. It's really happening because I was <laughs> well, so excited to speak to you because uh, you can really see that not only from your social media, but also your brand. Uh, you really see the love, but also the, the movement that you want to go behind beyond just products, because there is a lot of products. And we know this. We've worked in the big brands. There's a lot of amazing products out there. But what moves the needle is the mission and the change in mindset. And I think this is what you're doing in beauty. Um, but I want to ask a little bit about sort of your upbringing and where, what was your first memories of beauty for you? Uh, it came from actually uh, more indirect ways in a strange way. For example, I remember when I was a kid, I used to be obsessed with the Wizard, Wizard of Oz movie. Uh -huh. And I kept thinking... Wow, Dorothy shoes should be a lipstick. <laughs> like obsessed with this idea. And then yeah. I went to the Jardin Bagatelle and I saw red, black, red rose. And I was like, that needs to be a lipstick as well. So in a way, in a conscious way, that was my first memory as makeup. But I think what has been probably like building my whole aesthetic that I will find out years later was that this cliche of French women wearing red lipstick is totally true. I've been surrounded mm -hmm. by women wearing red lipstick. And so I think my mind was like looking for the red that they could wear. Um, so I would say, yeah, th those are the first um, memories. And so I know you studied fine art at okay, Ecole du Louvre in Paris. Um, and was art 
and beauty like you know uh just how, well, how did you fall in love with art in the first place so i i my first memory actually and uh it was i was very very young because i was at daycare uh hmm. that was my first memory with art because i was very shy and when i joined the class for the first time i felt like very uncomfortable because i didn't know how we connect with other kids so I just saw a table with some paint and I sat down and I started to paint and uh, all the other kids came and asked me about stuff I was doing with these colors. And that kind of, uh, that kind of broke the ice for me. So I thought, oh, unconsciously, I guess, uh, maybe color, or paint or art is a way to connect with people uh, and break the ice. So that was really my first memory and, and it grew bigger and bigger as a way of expressing myself and 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 seeing other artists expression and understand what they meant through the art etc um i actually remember growing up uh art has been such a big part of my life i used to uh have an art studio at the back of my house and used to paint every night uh whether it was uh really? there was a mixture yeah i used to i was more of a um like i preferred um sketching so pencils were more my medium and i used to go to museums whether it was in vienna or paris or everywhere i used to just paint uh, and, and and draw but i love uh, gouache and oil um and uh it was actually um, something that I was my meditation, you know, for me, it was my way to connect with myself and, and as well, as you said, so beautifully with others, because what people can see in your art can also make you grow. So sometimes I would showcase my art in school or wherever, and people would see things that I didn't see. And I, it made me also grow from my own yeah. art. It's such an amazing an world. But yeah. And, and I think it's, it's something that it's there's no uh, right and wrong with art it's just a, a self-expression tool so that's why i think no, I, I needed no right that growing wrong. up there's no right exactly yeah. uh, and but it's funny how art and beauty it's so connected you know uh it's it really is hand in hand um so did you find your experience with art kind of naturally me- welded its way into the makeup art of Shiba? because i know you didn't have any prior uh-huh. experience into makeup when I mean, you moved into new york right yeah, exactly. I, I, and actually, that's what I thought could be interesting because I, I mm. did for a costume party um, makeup for my friend. It was the first time I was touching makeup, and I thought, wow, it's like painting and fashion design. Like I'm dressing up a face, basically. And so I thought, mm. um, what if I do makeup that way? Like, what if I teach people to be their own artists and their own muse at the same time? And it has nothing to do with aesthetic nothing yeah. and and I re- there is this quote that i am obsessed with uh that's that from rainbow powell that says she never looked nice she looked like art and art isn't supposed to look nice it's supposed to make you feel something and for me this is exactly. a definition of beauty and so yeah. i wanted to do it that way so on purpose i didn't assist i didn't learn makeup um in order to protect that vision and try to blend art and and beauty basically Oh, that's amazing. I love that. And, and so t- can you tell me some of your initial like moments of uh, like peaks or really strong memories from your initial career? Um, I know you had initial jobs at like French Vogue and a few other things. What are some of the highlights? Yeah. I mean, the, the biggest highlight for me was when uh, I finally got an appointment with Karine Rothfeld at French Vogue. And wow. um, nobody, you know, I was such a, I was a kid. I was really, I was t- when he, I don't even know. I was such a kid, and I, and nobody wanted to really give me my chance in the industry because they saw she never assisted anyone. Her work is very creative. Like, what's up with her? <laughs> and Karen, she never followed anyone. She makes her own rule, you know. And so yeah. she looked at me with such a neutral mindset that it yeah. allowed me to have my own chance. And so she said, "Okay, I, I, I see you work." Um, I see something. I would love now for you to be the creator, creative director of your own work. So mm. I, I only see your vision. And I thought that was such an amazing, uh, that's such, such an amazing chance that I, when she gave me that chance, I was like, I have to kill it. Like I mm. cannot waste that chance. So I worked yeah. my ass off and then I presented her like a book basically um, wow. with, with some editorials I've done and uh, that I produced for, the sh- for, for her and show her my work. 
and I dropped it off at her office and I didn't want, I even wrote texts. Like I did like create like a real, a real magazine. And, um, I didn't want to be here when she looked at it because I was so nervous. So like I ran away and, and then her assistant called me and she's like, oh, Karim wants to call you immediately. Are you rich about my yeah, yeah, Of course. And she called me and she said, okay, we have to work together. And next thing I knew, she she did an article calling me the new face of fashion, which was huge. Uh, I think it's huge, and and my career really kick started thanks to that. So for me, that's really if I have to pick one moment that changed everything, that would that would be that. You know, I have to say something as well. I mean, I'll put the anecdote of my story too with Dior, but um, I think the real message as well is is that hard work and uh, not taking for granted that you put in does kickstart it like opportunities can always arise but you took the initiative to go the step further the extra mile no one told you to basically deliver like a magazine to her <laughs> you know it's a lot more work <laughs> but it it does make you stand out it shows your intent but also it can showcase your ability in the perfect way too right and um, I mean I was at Dior I did the same thing with uh, my uh, old CEO Claude Martinez I had a interview which I was at Estee Lauder at the time and I wasn't planning to come to Dior and I just had a meeting with him but I made like a 10 page 20 page document of like a five-year plan which I don't even know what I even wrote in there but I was just like this is my five-year plan if I came to Dior and this is what I would change and all these ideas and I put it in a printed you know document I had the Dior font I left it with him you know something to leave him and uh, I think that makes a big difference because I, you know, I think it shows them the confidence that if you were going to take control or they gave you the, the chance, they would feel confident that you would deliver totally. and you could also be on your own, you know? Uh, I think that makes a big, big impact. Exactly. So, yeah, and, and it's uh, amazing. So we have really that in common. I think that's the main thing is that uh, chance is not, you need a bit of chance. I'm not going to lie. You need a chance? You need a bit. My, my chance was, I, she noticed me, that was my chance. But then mm. you have to the grab that team. opportunity and exactly. work your your ass off. There's no secret. Exactly, no secret. No, uh, uh, and and listen as well as um, like you know listen to as much as you can. Be a sponge, but but listen with action. Action is just as important. I think a lot of people in these when they get opportunities, they don't know how to also act, and sometimes it's just by you know, not sleeping much, maybe uh, not being paid and doing all that stuff. You just have to deliver the results of like, you know, you, no one told you to create that magazine. You didn't ask for any extra time or whatever. You just hustled. You did it. And, that, and I'm sure that's one of many, many things you had to do to just to shine. Right. Um, but that's a very, very important factor. So I want anyone listening just to remember, like um, chances are, are a mixture of luck. And of course, uh, chance uh, is opportunity. But the the ability to benefit from the opportunity and the chance is by your own action. It's very very important. Um, without that, That's so true. you don't you don't seize it. So then then you worked. Uh, I mean, we have to. I wasn't at the same time as you were there, but I because I came to Dior, I think two thousand and seventeen. But uh, you were there two thousand and twelve at Dior, I believe. Oh, I don't know when. Wait, uh, but... listen, I'm like the worst with time. <laughs> I was I was twenty six when I joined. I'm thirty eight now. So it was twelve years ago. 12 years ago. Yeah. Okay, so maybe like 2010. But yeah, so uh, how was, <laughs> I have to ask, just secretly for me, how was Dior for you? It was it an amazing school? Uh, that was an insane school. I mean, I, yeah. I'm so blown away by what they made me do. You know, when now I think about it, I'm like, wow, they were crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they, I was a kid starting in the industry. And um, I think they saw some potential to have some very good instinct for marketing. So they put yeah. me in charge the first year of all the press books. So every launches, I would work on the press book and like do uh, the shooting and find the journalists and help with the text and do which paper mm -hmm. and, and, and all that stuff. And and Johnny still talked to me about it. Like they said it was a favorite um, press book, which I'm so honored. But in a way, I'm like, wow, they let me do this. This is insane. Um, Jean yeah. Trulis was. Uh, I think yeah. he's extremely. Yeah, he, he's, he's the amazing. Best. For but that. he left. He's unfortunately he's left now. But he was, uh, yeah, Florence and Jerome and uh, Fanny. They're amazing uh, people there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They, they really gave me my chance there. And then and then what I really appreciate also is that. Um, I negotiated my contract that I could still talk about other brands because I thought that's the only way I could be credible to journalists. 
And so I was the first makeup artist who was able to do that. And we had amazing support from the press because of that. And so what I love is that they trusted me, they supported me. I must say that when you're so young and you don't have experience with um, beauty brands, starting with Dior is definitely the hardest route because it's such a big fish yeah. in a it's... small pool, especially at the time. But mm -hmm. um, it puts a lot of pressure on my shoulders very quickly. But I must say, like, it, it made me test how, you know, strong I was, also how anchored I was in my own uh, direction. And after three years, I, I felt like I grew so much. And now I need to go back to a freelance world in order to um, not, not because uh, I was too young. I thought, okay, if I keep going with them, I'm going to... Um, forget to, and not, not have the opportunity to completely test where I stand as a creative. So that's yeah. why I decided to, to go, but I, I am, yeah, I had an amazing, amazing experience. It's so true. I mean, we have so many similarities. I was at Dior for three years yeah. too. I that, was, that was like the perfect optimum time. I left to, and I worked at Estee, you worked at Estee. And then we have our own brands. That's so it's weird. It's crazy. And we both obviously love and adore Veronique Courtois. So it's amazing how uh, there's a lot of synergies here. It's really cool. Yeah. But um, uh, so I know then you, yeah, so you left Dior, you created your own YouTube channel, you started growing your following. And then you were, I remember when I was at Estee, your name was very much there as the global beauty director. Uh, that was my first introduction to yourself uh, from the corporate world. Um, so how was it like, obviously, first growing your own following and then taking this incredible new role as a global beauty director at Estee Lauder? I mean, I mean, for me, the YouTube came from a very, um, like, how can I say? It wasn't strategic at all. Because when hmm. I said to my agent at the time, I'm going to do a YouTube channel, they were like, ugh. You just finally made it in the U.S., finally working with all these big magazines. Your name matters in the industry. If you do YouTube, because at the time it wasn't cool at all to do YouTube, you're going to ruin all that. And I yeah. thought, well, I've been doing makeup for so many years in the industry. I'm super glad that I'm whatever made it, if you want to say that, to the U.S., even though there's always room to grow by like yep. a lot, actually. Um what I felt a bit like I was like a little bit in my own bubble. Like, you know, when you make a artist in the fashion industry, it's a little bit like me, myself and I, the magazine call you mm -hmm. and be like, what do you want to talk about in your next story? And then you, at least for me, I, I was making the art direction of the shoot, etc. And then I started to post on Instagram and, and these women that I didn't know asked me, oh, I love this look. I want to do it. How do you do it? And I would spend two hours a day describing and responding to DMs. And then I thought, okay, let me do a YouTube channel because when I try to find somebody on YouTube that had the same mistake as me to refer that person, that was my first mm. step, I couldn't find it. So I said, okay, maybe I'll do it in the hope that it will help people. And, yeah. um, and so I did. And luckily, the industry did not reject me quite the opposite, actually. So it ended up being a strategic move, but it really wasn't on purpose. <laughs> That's amazing. No, but that's often the best way of how it happens. You have to kind of organically grow it yeah. uh, without the intent to grow it because people, the consumers of the content can see that. And I think they fall in love with content that's really real. And uh, that's how virality happens at the end of the day either, right? You never plan for it. It just has to happen. And then it's a journey you then realize, okay, it's, this is it. I'm on it. Um, but I think it's uh, yeah. really amazing that, you know, it's, it's um, something that you didn't just rely on. You, you also saw the legitimacy of your own career, having the, the backbones of the, the big houses by your side, but also creating your own brand. Because at the end of the day, going back to the beginning of the podcast, you knew what your mission is, right? Similar to me building my brand. It's like, the only way you can really see your own mission happen is by being in control of your own destiny. And that's sometimes by creating your own brand, right? Because you can work for the biggest companies, but at the end of the day, you're the helm of their own decisions, P&L, bottom line, this and that. Um, so how did Violet FR, like, when did that start cultivating in your head to create something like this? I mean, it started 15 years ago when yeah. I started to do makeup mm. and I didn't have really at the beginning of my career I was in New York <clears throat> I didn't have any money so yeah. I went to Sephora I was like really desperate I was like how can I buy all these products it's too expensive to build my kids 
And so I saw that Mac had those raw materials, the raw ingredients that I could use to create my own blush, my own foundation, my own mascara, my own eyeliner, and lipstick, etc. So I thought, okay, that's much, much cheaper. So that's what I did. And when I did that, I started to create formulas, textures, colors that are very unique. And I was like, why do I see any of this commercialized? And so it gave me the idea one day to do my brand and to kind of bridge the gap between creative and, and wearable, effortless way every day. Um, Amazing. And so I started to regroup ideas for years. And I really kick up. That's why I moved to New York eight years ago because I was like, okay, now yeah. I'm ready to be in my career in Europe ready to be on my brand, but I knew I wanted, I always say I wanted for my company to be an American, no, a French car with American gas. I love that. <laughs> I love that. That's and so, so cool. that's why I moved to the US, but I knew like, I can't just start my brand in the US like this. Um, yeah. So I was like, let, let me try to do a little bit of what I've done in Europe, in the US, to build my experience, build my name in this country, and then see how it goes. And then Quickly, it went much faster than what I was expecting because in 2018, I decided, okay, now it's time. I was still with honor. So I started to work with Kim Mist on skincare to make sure that my vision was actually doable. And when I realized it was, I right away went to talk to another team because I, I think transparency um, is key. And yeah. I had a very good relationship with them and I wanted them to be aware of my plan so they could make investments on me knowing what was going on. Like either you keep working with me or you stop, at least you know what I'm doing. And uh, yeah. they kept working with me for another year, despite the fact that I was eight months pregnant, which is kind of rare in industry. I told them I was eight months pregnant and they could have said, perfect opportunity to stop working with you, you know? Um, yeah. And of course they didn't because it's, it's, um, it's just a mentality of, of the group. They were like, we're going to support you. We're super proud you're doing your brand. We're sad to see you leave, but, um, but we're going to be there as soon as <laughs> you're ready to go back to work and we'll, we'll finish, you know, the year and, uh, and that's it. And, and when I did my pop-up, they all came to support me for my brand. Like they, they were really, um, r the real deal. <laughs> That's the best. That's the best feeling as well when you really have the people by your side that you know you know are supporting yeah. you, but also uh, you can trust as well. It, and and it's a testament to also you as well, right? You, you 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 bring the people that you also bring out from yourself. So it's a it's a it's a family that in the day that it's important to have with you, especially on this journey of building a brand. I, I have to ask, did you draw? Like, who created that design of the the face of the on the top of the lipsticks and stuff? So I, I wanted that the monogram idea was very uh, tricky because yeah. I work with art director and they will send me those V like very logo like and I was like no I yeah. I want something that's a message, um, mm. and uh, and so I I saw the work of Elena Souberon who is an amazing artist and it was very much in line with what I kind of see because I'm a fan of Picasso and um, Cocteau and Matisse. And so I sent her a few inspiration from these three artists and I did like a very bad sketch of kind of what I was seeing and um, also inspired by her work. And she yeah. sent me back something and it was like so good. I was like, yeah, this is it. <laughs> this is, it's stunning. I remember when I first saw it, I was like, this is so beautiful. It's one of those things where it's like a logo that you're going to remember, but it's also a piece of art that you just want either framed or yeah, definitely in your beauty bag. So, uh, yeah, it's, just, it's, it's beautiful. But I think also I like the fact that it wasn't Thank like you. the typical like V and then F. -R. Like, I've seen that yeah. before, right? Yeah. You're an artist. You want to create something a bit more emotive and, and uh, that definitely exactly. has it. It definitely has it. Um, but I would love to know a little bit about MPD. So, of course, I, I'm sure um, what was the first product that you kind of had to create? And then tell us about the amazing portfolio you've developed in all categories. So the first product was actually skincare because color I knew I've done make product development before mm -hmm. with all the brands I work with. I, I knew it would be a challenge to the colors I wanted to make, but I knew it was possible. What I didn't know is like, yep. is it possible to do mm. one product for skincare that would really streamline your skincare routine that yep. would 
not compromise on anything. I was, I'm still, and I, I was at the time, a huge fan of biologic recherche. So I did like six yeah. steps, skincare routine, because I have very sensitive skin. I cannot wear foundation. So my, I wanted mm-hmm. my skin to be impeccable. And it was taking so much of my time. And then I had my daughter and I was building this brand. I was like, I, I, I just don't have the time. This is not realistic. And also it's really not sustainable. Because yep. when I had my daughter, I started to be extremely aware of the issues. Mm-hmm. And so I work with Luc Jugler, who is this French chemist that's super famous in, in this industry for being very innovative, but also having incredible, um, how do you say, ethic. So he knows Efficacy. each yeah. farmer mm. who's going to harvest our bear sap. He's going to respect the season. The glacier water we have is like what already melted and that is mm-hmm. like filtered through lava rocks. Like the guy is just like so Genius. conscious of like, and, and with incredible values. So mm. I asked him, can we do a cream that's liquid that will act as a torner serum and moisturizer? I focus on, on, on inflammation because that's the main problem I've seen by touching skin for 19 years. And uh, that will focus on skin health instead of uh, the consequences of the issue yeah. of the skin. And he and I said to him, I also want this to be um, sustainable and I want this to be affordable as much as possible. And I thought he would tell me, okay, uh, come back when you have something more realistic for me. <laughs> and he said, okay. And that kind of became like a joke with, with him now where every yeah. time I throw him like a crazy idea and he's like, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nothing scares yeah. you. <laughs> nothing scares him. I love him. that. Nothing. Yeah. He's like very uh, like, boss tonkin we call in French. And yeah. so he wor- we worked on this product for three years. Mm, yeah wow. three years so it was a very hard work but when we started to see the first trials we were like this is amazing this is gold we need to pursue and then i was like okay when when i saw that this was possible then i moved on to color mm-hmm. um hair everything at the same time and and to do a beauty brand i, I mean i never communicate on the fact that the brand is clean because clean is depend depends on everyone's definition of, of clean exactly and yeah. i don't want to say safe ingredients because ingredients normally should not be harmful for you if it's approved by the fda so yeah. i don't want to feed this whole like fear marketing strategy either exactly let's say it's like um well thought um, intentional exactly yeah. <laughs> yeah. Voilà. and uh and vegan cruelty free yeah. which was yeah. very hard so when we did petal bouche our hero uh, lipstick there's this like super intense red it mm. was such a nightmare to make it red without using carmine which is this insect that everybody Beat, uses yeah. in the industry to make red exactly yeah so we, we we did it it took a year and a half just to do the color not even the formula so it wow. was uh process but every product basically what i'm thinking is okay i'm producing a brand so i am Mm. part of the issue with snobility i I just have to face it what can i do in order to make this less bad well one thing is that i've realized that if you don't want to if you want to be sustainable don't produce so maybe i'll just make products that i think are not existing on the on the planet so like a Mm. a special red or a special blue or or a boo-boo milk that doesn't exist and things that i feel like are 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 missing somehow like that could help people Mm. and um and then i would i would talk about brands that do products that exist that i love because you said something in the the intro of your podcast where you say you 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 don't believe in competition yeah collaboration on the support yep yeah, and for me, I always say I'm not here to compete. I'm here to compete. So yeah. every week we do content using other brands with products we love that we're never going to create because it already exists. And that forces exactly. us to be innovative. So it's actually a mm-hmm. very good way for us to work. So, And, and you know, it, it kind of reminds me of what you said to me before about when you went to your first job, whether it was Dior or whatever, you were very adamant that I need to still talk about other brands, right? It's That's the perfect example is you are also reminding that you are a consumer like everyone else, you know, out there. And we have to think yeah. about what's out there. 
not everything, you know, one brand can't, we can't have one beauty shelf from each of us home of just one brand, right? Let's be realistic. There's hundreds of different, you know, we have sometimes 10, 20 different. And we've also, both of us have worked in the industry for a while. So we know there are some incredible products out there by other brands. And, and, uh, and sometimes, you know, also as new brands ourselves, we're not going to have the millions of R and D and budget to, to think about even creating something like they could, but if there is a missing gap, and I think what you've done is I call it mindful MPD. Like you are really mindfully curating your portfolio to things that you feel haven't been existing in the market, but also, you know, will work but there isn't a time frame to that what i love is it's only going to be launched if it's perfect and if it's worth it like yes. you took three years right yes. most investors would be like you're crazy don't do it three years do it in one year basta finish done quickly get it out but exactly. you're like no 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 no. That's so say. that's amazing <laughs> i love that i really and it's, honestly i have to just say that really clearly because it's something that it's very rare. And I've also interviewed nearly 200 founders, okay? So I barely hear this as well, which is why I'm excited when you're saying it because you're literally saying the kind of beauty brands I want to see uh, and as a consumer, right? Not even as a founder, but just as a consumer because there's a lot of noise, a lot, a lot of noise. We know this, right? Well, so many products yeah. out there in the industry, so many. Um, so that's amazing. That's really, um, and I, yeah, and I actually, I bought your Boom Boom Milk um, before and it's absolutely phenomenal. It's something that I use and it's just, it's Thank so you. incredible how uh, you really have, I mean, also the way, okay, it's beautiful. Okay, that's one thing. I'm a sucker for amazing, beautiful packaging, the gold tip. And the, like, <laughs> but but generally the, the product efficacy. So now hearing, that's why I love when you talked about who's like some who's helped you and the, and the, the thought process, it's, it paints that picture for me. I'm like, aha, it makes sense. It makes sense. <laughs> so very, very cool. Um, so do you kind of have like now for Violetta FR, like um, anything in the works that you're hoping to develop? Not necessarily, you don't have to tell me the products, but just are you still looking within similar categories, uh, skin, fragrance? I think uh, I'm a little bit now interested in hair because I feel like we've treated the hair category uh, more in a classic way. There's nothing super innovative coming out. No. And That's and true. I was like, well, I, I, I went through some struggle. Like I, I, I suffer from an incredible amount of hair loss during mm. three different time of my the last three years, and um, and nothing really. I mean, a lot of things work, but nothing works for postpartum. I was thinking like things like that that can really help. Or I've used because I did a lot of shoots, I also damaged my hair. Um, and now I'm thinking, can styling products be also treating products and et cetera? Yeah, so exactly. now I'm, re- I'm rethinking, I'm rethinking a little bit about this category. Um, yeah. but strengthening skincare is key for us because we, we really created a community that's now understanding the message about focusing on your skin health rather than consequences. Yes. Also understanding that, um, this sort of, uh, it's too much products. People are just over-educated and, and, but missing some key information, like they're going to use, you know, vit- vitamin C and then they're peeling and mm. then they're going to use retinol and they, and then they, and I've been using, I, I've, I fell in that path at some point years ago and my, and now that I'm using only two products, my skin is actually much better and healthier than how it was back in the days. And, and so I, I really want this message to come through is that uh, give your skin a chance to do its work, uh, tr- yeah. trust your skin, and then be sustainable for you, but also for your skin health. Uh, it, it really helps. So we, we want to keep um, educating people there. That's amazing. Well, I'm really excited to see where how it develops as well, because I know anything you're going to create will be um, needed and also with so much love. So it's just like a like you know you're birthing, you. Uh, you know, new family <laughs> yeah. members, and it's very important and literally as well for you too, exactly. right? Very soon, so it's very exciting. Um, so uh, I want to. I wouldn't be. I would. I'd have to ask about Gerland too, because it's a very dear place in my heart. Of um, uh, Veronique Courtois, uh, I used to work with a lot. Is now the CEO of Gerland. I think without her. I wouldn't be where I am today. Um, she was really my uh, champion at Dior. And even today we speak regularly and she's, I would say, she's amazing. probably 
the best one of the best like my, my mom and her are the two most powerful like most important women in my life really like today like and my sister oh, of course i have amazing. to say my sister too i have to say my sister as well. <laughs> you gotta have to my, my, co- my co-founder <laughs> but um so tell me uh, how is galan being like for you as a creative director and of course working with veronique uh, I mean, I'm going to join you on on, on that with Veronique. She, she's, I was saying yeah. that the other day. Like, she's such an like an inspiring woman because yeah. she's really like a boss lady. Like, she boss. is Absolutely. working through it and building the business. And at the same time, she works with her instinct. Yeah, she's a, she's she's not. I've seen this so much. In, no. since I started my brand, how much people, investors or groups or CEOs are just copying and pasting a technique that worked with another company yep. and, and, and hoping it's going to work for them. And, and, and that's something I never understood because it disconnects you completely from the brand itself and your business. So you have to focus on what your business is doing and then you can be inspired for a strategy. Like don't be the easy thing of something for your own business. And that's how I see Veronique. And, mm-hmm. um, and you know, I keep saying to, because we're 99% probably <laughs> women uh, company. Exactly. And I keep telling the girls, like, like guys, you don't have to be cute and kind. Like, you can be tough. And, and I know, like, we say sometimes, oh, it's a mean culture. In the US, a lot, I found that people talk about a mean culture. I think as long as you're benevolent, being tough doesn't mean mm-hmm. you're mean. And so we yeah. have this stigma in, in, with women that we can be tough. And when I look at Veronique, for me, this is exactly what she is. She is tough, but with so much benevolence and so much exactly. respect and, and yeah. grace. And I really, really admire her leading um, style. And she's brilliant. And I love it because you know, I, yeah. I, she's very... Like she will be very sure of something and I'll be very sure of something. <laughs> and then we're going to challenge each other in such a productive way. And it's my, my favorite moments with her. And, um, and she will never have her ego. If, if suddenly no. I, I show her my way and, and she thinks actually I'm right, she's going to say, you know what? You're totally right. And she's going to be super happy to go my way. It's nothing about the ego. It's, it's about, uh, yeah. she's just a strong believer. You no, know, I, I love it. It's- you said it so perfectly and you know what's also amazing about someone like her is is like she's um on two parts one is a now running and and being the pioneer for Guerlain she's obviously been trained by the best of Dior etc but she hasn't copied and pasted she's she's pushed forward um, which can be quite hard to do because once you know a certain way and you've been trained for years in a certain school it's hard to break out from that, right? But also the people it's that she's hard, been around. Yeah. And we know, you know, whether I upset some people by saying this, but LVMH is predominantly, and, you know, big conglomerates is predominantly um, old white men. <laughs> I want to say that, let's be honest. It's, it's run by these kind of people. And there's a lot of... Um, you know, certain ways, and I've had this, I'm on the board of a brand called Patu. Uh, you know, I've seen this. It's amazing, amazing people, but it's quite similar minded, right? It's similar f- mentality of how to build. And what I felt with Veronique is she's always been around a lot, but never let that change her. She's always stood for her yeah. own ground. And that is what's inspired yeah. me in creating my business is like, I want to be like a Veronique and you know, build my, yes, I'm inspired by others. I've learned from others, but I'm still learning every day, listening what's out there. No ego, push forward. I only am I'm as good as today as I was, you know, yesterday. And this is the mentality that she really has taught me. Um, and it's been amazing That's to so see true. her do that while in the big group of LVMH. And, you know, I only could do yeah. three years in Dior and I had to tap out. I was like, I'm done here <laughs> for me. It was enough. Um, but uh, it's amazing. It's amazing what she's done. Yeah. Yeah, and thanks to her, things at Ghana are going really well because I was a little bit worried when they reached out and asked me to do this role because, I, I mean, Ghana is a big deal in France. You know, it's like mm-hmm. part of our history. So I didn't mm-hmm. take that offer like oh cool it's going to be a new title and uh, something else for my resume i was like i actually care for you guys to have the best person because this is a big deal to to write the mm-hmm. new chapter of ghana and bring back to life this amazing brand so it's a huge challenge 
not in a way because there's so much work to do, but more because it has such an impact on, on our culture, this brand. Exactly. And, um, and I wanted the best for, for them. And, and, but then as we talked, my, oh, it was really hard to, to turn away from that job because it's so much, yeah. so much things like triggered me passion and fire. So then I said, <laughs> okay, but how can we make it work? What I love with Veronique is that we had a very honest conversation about it. What I said, okay, Veronique, you know, my brand is my priorities. I've been dreaming of it for years. Yeah. This is, this is my, key, my mission. key job. Yeah. Exactly. How can we make you, she was like, Let, let's sit down. How, and we talked with her and Sana for a long time. And I must say that now it's been two years. One year I worked in the background and then one year, one year official that um, they have been respecting beyond everything they promised me they will do in terms of respecting my time and, and, and giving me the support I need to do my job well, but not like not inventing my time on the other side for my own brand and, and let me talk about my brand. If journalists ask me about like there's no competition between the two brands. Um, people mm. at Ghana wear my products and people at my brand wear Ghana products. Like it's such a healthy environment that I was not hoping as much. And now that it's here, I'm, I'm really blown away of how smooth and great it's going. And this is thanks to Sana and Veronique. Really? I mean, and, and them two together, because together they're like a... The amazing duo. I mean, the yeah, killing duo. <laughs> the killing. I mean, yeah, Dior lost a, a lot of great talent when they, but then Galan gained in tenfold. So it's amazing, and I think also it's very important because for me as a consumer, before uh, I think there's a that we can see from building brands how the quick the mind of the consumers are changing and the consumers itself. Right, we're living in a Gen Z world. We're living in a TikTok era. And whether it's content, product, uh, team, what happened 10 years ago or even a year ago now isn't going to last much longer if you don't think about reinvention, but still keeping yeah. integrity of what it is, right? This is an 1828. Garlan is an amazing house. But if you want to win in Sephora, if you want to win in D2C, you've got to think about who are you targeting today. Yeah. So... Um, you know, in, and exactly, even having someone like you, I think it adds so much value, even having you creating your own brand, because you're listening from your own brand and you're learning from your own brand. Yeah. That's actually, for me, uh, a huge advantage, like a secret weapon it, it, compared to the other, um, you know, creative directors out there. So very, very, it's very interesting to see that, actually. I'm really glad that, you know, you're saying and it, it works because it can work. And I also think, yeah, and I, when I was at Dior, and then I, when I was at you, I kind of, I said to Claude Veronique, I said, I'm building Fable and Main while I was there for the last year. I was very open about it. I said, I would love to try to do both. Um, if, you, if it doesn't work, I, I'll leave. But my priority is my brand. And I made it very clear, like today, my, and often that could be the, the, the knife in the throat, right? Like I'm telling them right up front, my priority is not <laughs> Dior, my priority is my brand. But uh, I want to do both if I can. And they allowed me. Uh, I eventually had to quit That's when um, I just realized I, I had to, you know, be the CEO of my brand. I, I, there wasn't, I couldn't do both. Yeah, there yeah. was a point where I, I couldn't. Um, but uh, it was a good year where I tried, I did both. And okay, I didn't sleep much. I was uh, sleeping sometimes, uh, working <laughs> crazy hours, but it, it, it's possible. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and I think uh, you don't have to sacrifice sometimes. I think having an open, honest conversation with the right mentors, right team, if you have a vision, if you're working in a company today, and you want to create a brand, just surprise yourself by maybe speaking to your boss, speaking to people and say, look, I'm thinking of doing this. Because sometimes when you open more magic, it helps both people, right? Uh, and I think sometimes I we think feel honesty like... honesty is, is very key. Honesty is very key. Honesty is very key. key. Because it ends up to, 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 to be respect. And when I say benevolence, like you can be tough. Uh, mm. At the end, benevolence is that. Is, is honesty. Benevolence is, um, is respect. And, and I think that's very, very important to, to, to keep this as a, as a value in everything you do. And things will, to me, I think they've been easier because of that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. No, oh, well, I mean, we're going to now go to fire round questions because we could speak all day, but we know, you know, you have a brand to build, <laughs> uh, a, another brand to direct to creatively. We have a busy day. But um, before I go to fire round questions, Violet, I have a desert island situation. It's going to be very tough because you know what's coming. <laughs> so I'm inviting to Founded Beauty Island, but you can only bring one Violet FR product. What is your go-to product? 
I mean, if I had SPF, I would tell you SPF. <laughs> but we all know SPF is I very, think. very hard to make. So <laughs> it's very, exactly. very difficult. And there's plenty on the planet, so I don't need to make exactly. one for now. But, exactly. So besides that, I would, for BFR, I would say Bumbo Milk by far. No Bumbo Milk, yeah. Three in one cream spray, you can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. Um, I think a lot of people on the island will be fighting you for that. So, <laughs> but amazing. Um, okay, five round questions and then we're done. So, five quick, uh, first thing that comes to your mind, okay? So, the first brand, the first question is What's another beauty brand you're currently loving, except Galin and except Violetta Fa? <laughs> um, I don't know. It, yeah, I guess you can. Call it a beauty brand. I would say the Nuco. Yeah, uh, they, love they focus Nuco. On, yeah, on 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 supplements, but they do have skincare and uh, fragrance, uh, functional fragrances, yeah. and I I just love everything they're doing. No, it's and the branding is beautiful, and uh, Jules is coming yeah. on the podcast as well. So yeah, no, it's a great great brand. Uh, um, yeah. What's a guilty pleasure of yours? So that's the thing. Uh, if I have pleasure, I don't have guilt. <laughs> Why feeling guilt about pleasure? <laughs> You're the first person that caught me out on that question. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah. What do you what do you secretly like to indulge in? Is it chocolate? Is it wine? <laughs> what's your what's your go to? I mean, I I love good wine. I love yeah. good wine. I'm, 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 my dream is to have my own cave with like it collects uh, wine. I'm like a real um, yeah. What conno- wine connoisseur? Nice. <laughs> exactly. Passion, passionate about it. I like that. Uh, what are you currently watching or reading, if you have the time? <laughs> uh. So so I watch, okay, I have in my bedside table my the, the books I want to read, the last uh, Murakami book that I love Murakami. Uh, yeah. But I'm in one week I've been on maternity leave, so I'm finally going to be able to pick up my book. I do yeah. watch a few things while I cook or I would do the laundry for my kid. Um, nice. And I'm going to watch um, like either this guy that shows a little bit of scientific like what's the news in the science world because i'm kind of a nerd which i love uh yeah. or the french news because i really have trouble to watch the american news so i watch french news <laughs> or we have this show in france that's called um uh, that i love because they talk about very like difficult topic in society and they bring on guests that can talk about it and it's incredible inspiring so i love it <laughs> amazing i love that um do you have a favorite social media platform right now uh youtube you know for me that's youtube because that's where i seek information and i feel like i'm learning stuff which i love especially when now that i don't have time to read really i can i can learn through listening while i do other stuff uh yeah. the rest i'm i'm not um I used to be a fan of Instagram because it was a window to the world. It was about building a community, etc. I found I found that it's, it's still the case, of course, with a lot of toxicity also in there that makes me like, like it less. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm the exact same. I mean, I still just post as a as a just I need to get the content out there, but I don't really care. It's like it's quite bad. I just post. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, bye. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you have a favorite quote? The one from Raymond Powell I told you yep. about. I love that one. Yeah. And my last question is, if you weren't a beauty entrepreneur, makeup artist, what would Violette be doing? So either I would not work and have a house in Provence and mm. just enjoy life, <laughs> or I would be an interior designer. Ooh, I love that. That's very cool. Well, yeah, I'm sure, you know, to be fair, like, uh, it's one of those things where I ask this question, but our life is full of reinvention. So I'm sure you'll be able to do all those things as well. Um, but, uh, <laughs> it's been such a pleasure, Violet. We can speak all day. We're going to meet in person soon. We'll, uh, we'll enjoy uh-huh. a nice wine and geek out and we'll have maybe a dinner yeah. with Veronique. It'll be super nice. <laughs> um, but in the meantime, where can everyone follow you and keep up to date with your brand? 
on my Instagram, I said I would be the, the, the best. So the hand with yep. Violet FR. Yeah, that's it. And Amazing. you can find the product on VioletteFR.com. Amazing. Well, I'll put all the, the links in the bio, um, as well as Gerlin. People want to also check out the amazing work you're doing there. And uh, we'll, we'll be in yeah. touch very, very soon. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me.